مرحبا بكم مرحبا بكم في زنزان اليوم سيت اون ايميسيون فريمون اكستراوردينير فريمون سبيسيال علاش على خاطر اليوم سيت اون جور سبيسيال بور لي باند في تونس على خاطر كارتاغوت كارتاغوت اليوم خرجوا الكليب نتاعهم اي بيان ايفيدامون جي افيك موا طارق بن سيسي عسيمه طارق سلام يا اخي كما دي تكلم توا جي عندي ساده معايا مهدي خميخ هاي مهدي Alors, Mehdi, ah, Mabrouk Ben Zed, le Kofet. Il y a Aishik, il y a Aishik. Ça fait très bien. Eh ben voilà, Happy Father. Et donc, Andek, Mehdi, uh, la surprise, uh, Mr. Michael Stein. Hey, hey, hey. hey good Thank you me. very much. Thank you very much for uh, being here uh, for this. Uh, I wish you were here and show. not here, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish we all wish. Um, so the uh, the event today is uh, the the new clip of uh, Cartagots, uh, the uh, the clip that um, has been on YouTube today. Tarak uh, Mahdi. Yes, bon. Uh, um, I will talk in English since uh, there is a lot of people, I guess, from all over the world following uh, the discussion. Maybe since uh, we have. An icon with us to today, so uh, Mike Stan. Uh, so um, yes, the release um, of uh, Whispers from the Wicked uh, is today. So uh, we are really happy uh, because it was a big experience for us since the first day we thought about inviting Michael um, uh, on the song. Uh, we thought directly uh, about him, and uh, he was really um, uh, how to say he didn't hesitate a second to to, to say yes. And um, he was really generous with us, so uh, we're really thankful for this, Mike. And uh, yeah, today is the release day, and uh, we hope that everybody will like the song. Yeah, holy shit! And it was cool. Like, we've been talking about it like ever since we met. What, what was it like the first time ten years ago, more? Yeah, uh, two thousand nine. Like doing uh, eleven years. Eleven years, holy shit! Yeah, man. I'm getting old. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but but we talked about just like yeah, coming down, doing like a guest appearance on one of the shows, and then we started talking about like one song for the new album, and then it finally happened, and I'm so happy it did, and it turned out to be such a great show, and uh, it was so much fun, and I'm I'm so thankful that you guys invited me, and I had had a time of my life, so super cool, and I love the way that it came out, and the video looks amazing too. Everybody should watch it right now. Right. Um, uh, the video was uh, recorded on the uh, L'Etoile du Nord show uh, last year and the release, uh, the release show of the album. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was absolutely uh, fantastic, the, the, the show. Uh, what do you remember about the, th that day, uh, Michael, yeah. Mazi, Tarek? Well, I was well, overwhelmed just by how, how, how cool it was to, to finally meet you guys again and then... Um, And also like do a, a show where it was just like you know part of a song and then another song just doing that like a guest appearance it's kind of weird because you get way more <laughs> at least i do way more nervous than i would a normal show where you play for an hour and a half i don't know why but it was uh tense and but a super cool experience because the crowd was amazing everybody was on the top of the game playing wise so it was super cool and i um Hospitality wise, it was beyond amazing, so I, I couldn't be happier. Maddie? Uh, yes, uh, I mean, for me, it was really uh, a lot of things that day because, um, uh, let me be honest, because the death of the death metal for me is Mike Stan. So um, to be on stage with the voice of death metal was kind of like a, a lot of. Um, emotions and uh, especially uh, when he joined the stage and um, I don't know I, I was imagining everything in the song while I was writing the lyrics and uh, I, I was really happy that Mike loved the melodies and uh, the whole song and, uh, and everything and we talked about it uh, back in 2009 uh, in the bus while we go into um, to the hotel oh yeah so And we talked about the um, uh, um, how, what kind of artists we like, and uh, we have like one artist in common, and I was really happy that Mike loved him. Uh, it's it's about uh, Jorn Lender, 
Of course. And, uh, it's one of my favorite singers uh, in the world. I mean, just after uh, Ronnie James Dio. Uh, so um, I was really thinking about all these details while writing the song and being on stage with Mike and singing the song and seeing him uh, next to me, singing the song with me. It was like, bam. <laughs> It's really special for me. So uh, I don't know what kind of emotion I will talk about about that day, but uh, all I know is um, every second uh, on stage was counting for me. So yes, uh, I'm really thankful for this. It was super. Clara, cool. it's your turn. <laughs> it's your turn to say something. <laughs> After I was I was in mute because uh, the kids are entering now, so I put mute. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, no, it doesn't matter if the kids center, it, it, you know, uh, we are on the air, we are uh, going, uh, everyone is at home. Right. Ah, it's, uh, this is why. Yeah, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. No. <laughs> they, don't, they don't want to go. So, how was it? Um... <laughs> Tarek is very disturbed, I think. Tarek, so... <laughs> How how was it? What do you remember about the the concert of one year? One year, guys. Yes, for Mike, I remember uh, he drive a car. But he drive into the car, the sport car. I did. <laughs> Just before the show, one uh, one hour before the show, I think. <laughs> yeah, it was speeded up with the car, and then like, bam, he landed in the in the venue. <laughs> 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 it could have been a major disaster. I was speeding pretty. I was going way, way over the speed limit, and I uh, <laughs> that would have been arrested. <laughs> but I, I was, uh, I was too fast, maybe. To get <laughs> so I propose you to uh, to watch the clip now, ah, and after yeah. we we come back to to speak about it and uh, to speak about uh, lots of thing. And uh, I'd like to say to all the people that are. Here, uh, they can uh, speak with us, they can put uh, a comment uh, in uh, our YouTube channel or in uh, our uh, Facebook watch. So, um, hello Kings, it's uh, KH Blue on YouTube. Murat uh, Hashselem, the, the match is going very uh, stronger. Yes, Murat, it is. <laughs> Thanks to Tarek and Mahdi. Uh, Raouf Jassi, bonsoir tout le monde, bonsoir uh, Raouf. Marem Bahri, happy to see you in live, guys. Mehdi Tarq and Michael Stein, congratulations for the new video and the new label. I was going to talk about it. Uh, Adel Swilam, hey, guys. And uh, Ayman Luhibi on Hi. YouTube. Uh, evening, guys. Uh, well done on your new video, Kartagertz and Michael. I'll be around all evening bombarding you with all sorts of questions. Uh, you're welcome, guy. <laughs> So let's do it. Uh, let's uh, let's see the uh, let's see the video clip. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so uh, that's that's very uh, very great. Huh? Um, I'd like to to ask you a question, uh, Michael. Um, accepting to be uh, to 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 help. Um, uh, I'm going to okay. Accepting to 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 sing with the uh, the Tunisian band. Okay, uh, you know Mahdi, you know Tarek from a very long time, eleven years. But you got a name, you got a, you got a, um, um, a reputation, you got a, a career. Accepting to sing, what are the what were the, um, the the thing that make you accept to to sing on this song? Well, yeah, I get requests like this, you know, once in a while, or sometimes quite often, sometimes you know not. But so I try to figure out like what are my why would I do it? You know, is it yeah. something that is really challenging? Is it fun? Is it for good money or is it for good friends? That kind of thing. And is it a good song? And uh, most, mostly it's if it's a good song and I feel like I can contribute something, then that's awesome. You know, 
Um, sometimes I do like uh, guest vocals for for some friends just because they they need kind of like the boost or they don't just don't have a singer and and I find the uh, material fascinating. But in this case, I heard the song and I was like, this is a great song. You know, if I can be any you know part of it, awesome. You know, and and also I wanted to do something together with these guys because I think they're such a great band. And we've had such great times together. The, the few times that we've met before, so um, uh, it was a no-brainer. Basically, I was, it was just like, "How can we make it happen? Like, uh, how can this uh, work?" And uh, we managed to figure it out, and it, it was fantastic. And you know, normally these things don't really come together the, the, that perfect way, but this one really, really did. So I, I couldn't be happier. And to be able to to perform like live. Uh, or the first show, you know, playing the song for the first time, that kind of stuff. It's just perfect. So well planned and well executed and all that stuff, you guys. Loved it. And uh, mm -hmm. did you make them, sh did they make you choose um, many songs and you, you choose one or uh, they told you, please song, sing on this song on uh, Whisper from the Wicked? It was basically that song, wasn't it, right? That's what I remember. I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, as, I, as I told you, I, I was writing the song and uh, when I when I when I was thinking about the or the other the other personality in the song, yeah. it was Mike. So, mm. and we talked about it with Tarek, and uh, he said, "Yeah, it will perfectly work." And uh, it worked really really nice. I mean, uh, it was it was just a dream or uh, just an idea in the beginning, because just like to to to, to work on a song for for some time, and then like everything is ready. You have uh, a yes or a no in the end. I mean, yeah. we just get the song um, uh, recorded and everything was uh, was done and all the lines are ready. And then, like he, he had his lyrics, everything just like, uh, do you want to join? And he was like, hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would so, be yeah. yeah. When you put it like that, you want to join? It's just everything's written, all that's done. Just like. Provide whatever, uh, do your thing. And uh, the, the, the places where, um, because um, uh, Mike was really generous while recording the song. He just like, he like showed me all kinds of of screams and all kind of, of things. And uh, it worked out just like we were in one room actually. So uh, this is, I'm really, uh, I'm really amazed how it worked and it matched together because it's not easy to, um, to record uh, like um, each one in the in, in the country, and uh, without like communicating physically, you know what I mean? It's not Nobody like did. the same thing when you are in the same cabin and singing together. So um, uh, Mike like gave the song a, a lot for me when I was like revisiting the lines and um, trying to, uh, to 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 fit everything together. Uh, I, I was like. Uh, just like he was here actually so uh, maybe because he's a professional uh, but i think it's more the um the emotion that matched and um this makes me really uh really happy <laughs> and it, it it felt like it's, it's it's a song that i you know i love to sing along to it i it's like so adding like something to it was just easy and um, I was like getting into it, so that wasn't a problem at all. And also, I mean, yeah, sure, it is weird not being in the same continent even <laughs> when you're recording. But at the same time, like it's a universal language of music, and yeah. so we and I kind of get your thing, and you you know what I do, so it's it's not that difficult. And and then just and for me to record different versions of something and doing retakes, doing all kinds of stuff easy you know and just send it off so it's i mean and who knows that maybe that's the future hey we're all drinking here come on <laughs> um maybe this is the okay. future of, of drink water you know we don't um, we really don't need to meet like it, it's a simple thing like you, you record all your, your parts at home or in your your own private studio and it's it's kind of crazy but it does work and i i'm really happy that it does because and i've been doing a lot of these stuff now just because yeah hey i'm not going anywhere yeah. <laughs> no, no problems no shows, no anything so i might as well sit here and scream into this microphone yeah. <laughs> and um what do you think of cartagots michael i you know we as we said, well, yeah, we 
we met first time 11 years ago when we uh, did our first ever show in Tunisia and I, I got into them immediately and I thought this is awesome great band great vibe great uh, great singer maybe I you know and I told you then it's like you're the Tunisia's John Lande and uh, I think you we we bonded over him early on so I, I've just been a fan ever since so it made perfect sense and then we met you know a couple of times uh, throughout the years and so um I've kept in contact and I've, I've kept up with the music. So um, it, it just felt great and a, like an honor to, to be invited to, to record with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, 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 what are they saying on social media? Um, oh, do we have any Muna. <laughs> hey guys, happy to see you. Murat Hashselam Chaba, the Tahmira Fi Sidi Bilassan. So, how can I translate it? <laughs> it looks like, you know, a Sufi thing, you know, a Sufi Yiddish thing, you know. <laughs> trance, trance. Um, it is. Queen G's. <laughs> Uh, great artists like yourself make me proud of my Tunisia. Great job, guys. Um, okay, thank you very much. Hugo de Leon, Mwichingon. Miriam Bahri, donc là, she's calling to someone. Il y a une voix qui ressemble à celle de Marilyn Manson. Uh, bon, so, Murad, don't know very much about uh, metal music, you know. Uh, he's interesting uh, on metal music with uh, this stream show, so... You think that uh, you got a voice that uh, is like uh, Marilyn Manson, but no, no, Murat, no, absolutely no. <laughs> no, no, no. Put on your head. No, uh, you find out. <laughs> That's not the case. Uh, Philippe, Mesh, Philippe Michel say bonsoir, bonsoir Philippe. Um, Ghost taken. Hi guys, a huge DT friend here. Just discovered you today, thanks to Michael's uh, tweet. Uh, thank you, Michael. Wow, have, have awesome really video, fun. great band. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the share, Michael. Uh, Bahri, Michael Stein is a big name in the world of metal and his band Dark Tranquility. We were happy to see him here in Tunisia with Cartagots. It was an unforgettable concert full of energy and good metal vibes. Um, I can tell. There uh, were good metal vibes. Yeah. Um, what? Um, Pedro Pirani. Uh, uh, hello, guys. Cheers from, from Brazil. They are looking <laughs> at us on Brazil. Whoa. Obrigado. <laughs> Obrigado. <laughs> Uh, looking forward to the new album. Uh, okay, what's gonna talk after? Um, the new video is uh, fantastic uh, from Chrissy A. Thank you. Uh, mais au mieux, uh, très belle et unique. Okay, as far as I can remember, Cartagos have been around since the late 90s and have plenty of experience as well. They just didn't get the level of support they deserve, but better later than never. Yes. Hey. <laughs> of course, uh, Chrissy A. No, Manson, no. <laughs> <laughs> <Fucking no. laughs> uh, yes, he writes it twice. <laughs> so, um, it was, um, uh, and, and the, um, the, 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 the fantastic thing about, uh, about the, uh, the, the thing there that today, there are lots of uh, magazines that uh, shared about uh, the Cartagots, uh, um, the Cartagots uh, uh, album. So, um, um, uh, just uh, looking for it uh, here. Once of them, Cartagots uh, in nuovo video di Whisper from the Wicked uh, from Metal Hammer Italy. Uh, ok, uh, c'est quoi le vidéo officielle de Carta Gotts uh, de l'album Monster and Me, tramite la Metaville, uh, Rico. Um, there's Sato uh, Braveheart. Uh, I don't know. Ok, I'm uh, to, to change. Um, some screen. There is also. Uh, this one uh, from uh, Metalhead uh, from Romania, Romania. 
Katagots oh, wow. yeah. uh, to Pisu K Michael Stan de la Drag Tranquility. It's in uh, Romania. Uh, uh, and there's uh, lots of um, of, uh, of metal zine that uh, wrote about this, and uh, that's that's uh, that's great for you guys. Thank you. So, Michael. Yes. Um, how you doing? <laughs> what are you doing now? <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm happy and I'm kind of sad. Yeah, I want to go on tour. <laughs> I want to go to festivals. I want to see people. I want to hang out. Um, so that's weird. This would have been yeah. a fantastic week and weekend. So many shows just here in Gothenburg. I was telling you guys before, but like Faith and More was supposed to play here tomorrow. Uh, Mastodon the day after. Then I'll be playing Grass Pop and then seeing Pearl Jam on in Copenhagen on Monday. Yeah, none of that's going to happen. No. <laughs> so it, it's weird. And, but I, in a way, it's, it's good and creative. We just finished our new album. Uh, yeah, good. Recording all yeah. Day. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we've been doing for all this time. Yeah. 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 It's uh, your 12th uh, new, uh, your 12th album. Uh, the last one yeah. was uh, four years ago. Atoma. Yeah. yeah, which seems crazy. But now, yeah. So now we, all the recording is done, basically. So now we, we just shipped it off to be mixed by Jens Bogren. So he's working on yeah. it right now. And I cannot wait to hear it. And it's been a long process, like four months in the studio and um, like a year of pre-production, that kind of stuff. Um, but it's it's been cool. And, and of course, I mean, time-wise, this has been a good thing for us because, yeah, we had nothing else planned until just now. Um, so we've been in the studio constantly, uh, which has been great. Hopefully it will turn out um, well as well. But I, I think it will. Feel We're feeling good and confident about it. Um, and then I have some other stuff that I'm going to go work on and, you know, keep writing and keep, uh, kind of contributing to other projects and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I wish I we could just be on a stage in front of a crowd or in a crowd even. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. Weird. Being in a crowd, like with my friends, like having a beer, seeing a great band. I think that's the thing that I miss the most. And yeah. it's gonna be a while till we get that. I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't. I don't know how, what the future will bring, but it it looks bleak for sure. And I'm, I really miss that. So I've been looking at a lot of like concert DVDs and streams and all that stuff just to get some feeling for live music. But it's not the same. It really yeah, is. Of course. But it. it I can. Uh, yeah. 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 Go on. Go on. No, but it, it it is a good time to be creative. Like you're stuck at home, yeah. Uh, you might as well do something with it, you know. So I've been writing a lot, and I've been mm. singing a lot, and you know those things. So it, it's good to to kind of have this kind of forced uh, quarantine on you, um, because yeah, it brings out like a lot of anger, frustration, and that kind of creativity as well. So I guess you know if you have, want to find something positive about it, that would be it. That's uh, the cha the challenge is that I think it's the the first album that you uh, write that you uh, compose uh, without Nicholas Sandin uh, yeah. and uh, with two two new guitarists um, Johan uh, Reynolds and uh, Chris Amott. Yes, uh, was that a very big challenge for you? Yeah, a big change, of course. Um, yeah. You used to do something for such a long time, and you have kind of like, you know, this input from, uh, from you know, the members who've been with us forever. And, of course, Nicholas has this since the very beginning. Um, but at the same time, like, Martin and Anders have been writing most of the material in the later uh, years. Um, so getting into that mood wasn't that difficult. But then bringing Johan into it kind of, write guitar parts and also write some of the songs um, was new. But fortunately, we had a lot of time to kind of uh, have him kind of get our thing and also um, kind of uh, be accustomed to his kind of writing style as well. So I think it really worked out in the end. But it was, you know, it, it's a challenge. But after so many years of doing the same old thing, having a little fresh blood, fresh perspective, fresh kind of new ideas is a really, really good thing. So I think um, like what we've come up with this time around is, at least to me, feels very, very fresh. And I, um, I 
can't wait to kind of hear it properly and get it out there. Um, but it's so, so that's uh, of course a challenge. Um, but anything new, change is good, you know. Even though I miss everybody who's kind of left the band or or moved on to other things, it's still uh, like the new thing is still like what I really cling on to right now. And, uh, so it, yeah, it's um, cool. and and smooth as well. Um, I read that uh, Nicholas left the band not because he, he, he liked the, the process of creation and writing album, but uh, the the two routine was too much for him from all these years. I think uh, maybe yeah, it's a choice for sure. For sure. I mean that that's that's a big part of it. Um, and then also you know he's having a young child. Uh, he he lives in the states now, um, yeah. and he's been kind of like really wanting to to be there and be home for his family and like touring is like the least of his like in his, not in his mind anymore in in that way and i uh i can totally get that and i respect that you know and he just wants doesn't want to be a part of that life anymore and also then he feels like he's intruding by being part of the band if he's not touring if he's not doing all the other stuff so he was like okay i'll take a step back you know And I respect that. I think, I mean, he, he made the, the best decision for him, even though I, you know, I think it's, you know, sad, you know, but also I'm okay with go, moving on, you know, doing new things, you know, with new people. You know. And uh, the question is, uh, this is going to be the 12th album. Um, from all these years, lots of bands have changed the way that they uh, compose uh, the sound the the, the music uh, the uh, the way they, they compose uh, uh, the albums uh, I, i i take uh, an example opeth opeth yeah. began very rough and now maybe it's going to jazz you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> are you um, are, are are we going to listen um, the basics of dark tranquility uh, like we knew it Before uh, uh, you know the the mix of uh, symphonic and rough uh, and uh, um, clear sounds and very rough sounds, or uh, are we going to to another? Um, you know, uh, where are we going? <laughs> I, I don't know where we're going, but that's the exciting part. No, we're not going that. Far. I mean, it's the the basic sound is still there, of course. Just yeah, super heavy, screaming. It's loud. It's fast heavy but there's a lot of melody there as well and um, a lot of electronics a lot of guitars a lot of um, analog a lot of digital and it's <clears throat> more varied i think um but i think everybody's going to be it, it, it's not that big of a change we're not going progressive or um jack <laughs> <laughs> but no but it's uh and it's just it, some some parts are different there are a few songs that That are very very different from from the from most of the album, but at the same time we've done similar things to that before. So I don't think anything's going to be a um, that big of a surprise, you know. Hopefully, just a pleasant surprise because we want to be um, predictably unpredictable. You know what I mean? Yes, um, there are some um, some reaction uh, from alors, uh, what we got. Uh, Petra Sirmakos uh, from YouTube. Hello, guys, and cheers from Greece. Hey, from Greece. Uh, Michael Tarak and Mahabi, what band did you grow up listening to? Ooh. You guys start. <laughs> <laughs> um, what band? Uh, so uh, I guess... I got into rock music in general uh, with Pink Floyd and uh, Guns N' Roses. Nice. Uh, and then, um, I don't know, something happened in my life and I discovered like some um, um, death album, Testament album, In Flames album, yeah. Dark Tranquility album. And um, I remember that time, yeah, there was uh, not Slayer. Yeah, I guess Slayer, and uh, then I discovered uh, the metal in general. Mm. But uh, I'm a big fan of White Snake, uh, of Jorn Linda, of course, Arian, uh, Camelot. I don't know a lot of bands. 
Yeah. I mean, a uh, lot of influences. I mean, I love rock metal as I love progressive metal as I love heavy metal. So, so I'm into a lot of, I, I need to, um, to feel a lot of energy through music because I, um, I guess that um, we need to listen to a lot of music to create. So, uh, but most of the time when I'm alone at home, White Snake would be good for me. That <laughs> cover there. Love it. Cover there. That it's you. Like when I unmute, I, I unmute I, I the, the the mic. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so the question was, um, I, what bands did you grow up listening to? Yes, my first metal album was uh, a tribute to Black Sabbath. It, uh, the name is uh, Nativity in Black. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I remember that one. You no, know, there was a band like uh, White Zombie, uh, Megadeth, uh, Ugly Kid Joe, Biohazard, uh, Auto, and Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, this is the album who put me into metal. So after that, I saw Metallica and uh, the stuff like this, you know. Nice. And you, Michael? For me, it was like the, you know, the big cool kids in school when I was like in fourth grade, which was like 10 years old or something like that. They were listening to Iron Maiden and Kiss. And um, I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. And I'd ask my parents, like, I... I need a heavy metal album in my life right now because I was listening to synth and pop and that kind of stuff, like Depeche Mode, Alphaville, that kind of stuff. And, um, and Power Slave had just come out. So I I told my parents, like, I need that new Iron Maiden album, whatever it is. I don't know, but the, the album cover is awesome. I need it. So I bought the cassette, uh, or I got the cassette, and that was my first uh, heavy metal experience. And, uh, yeah, I never looked back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. then, of course, like a you know a, a friend on the street where where we lived, like me and Nicholas and Anders lived, um, his older brother was into thrash, so he introduced me to Creator, which blew my mind because it was extreme and you know fast and thrashy and with screaming vocals, and that was just like out of this world, the coolest thing I've ever heard. I need this in my life, and. Uh, And then I met, you know, more friends in the area and I started hanging out with Thomas Lindbergh from At The Gates who lived, you know, across the street from me. And he was older and he was into really, really heavy, intense stuff and thrash and death metal and speed metal and black metal, all that stuff. So it turned me on to so much stuff. So that's how it started for me when I was 14, something like that, 15, 16, you know. And and and, and I think, you know, we always talk about like how important albums are you know yeah shaping the way you um listen to music and what you appreciate but i think even more than that or as a part of that is that you actually it, it informs your life like you want to be that guy who listens to that kind of music because that's how strong an impact it has on you you know you you want to be a metal head because that's what you are you know after you listen to those albums and you you every every second of your day is filled with images of, of what what you hear and, and how these albums kind of affect you. Um, and there's really no going back. If you're not taking it seriously, you can might as well go back to listening to your old records. But if you get into it, there is really is no turning back. <laughs> so, uh, Chrissy, I miss live shows. I miss uh, shooting shows. Uh, the longest I've Probably gone without in the last decade. Uh, Yeah, for, for everybody, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. So glad to hear the recordings are done. Also, a question to Michael. Any plan of doing live streaming concert as many bands are doing nowadays from uh, Pedro Pirati? Yeah, Pedro. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we are. Um, it's going to happen. We're just going to finish the recording. And the plan is to do like a release show much like the one that we did last year for <laughs> Got the Goods, but yeah. we can't have a crowd and uh, no one is going to fly in to do it. So we're just probably going to do a show here uh, in Gothenburg and film it and, you know, stream it and, you know, play all the new songs and, and all that stuff and, and try to make it look cool because we want to kind of treat it as the first show of, of a tour. You know, so hopefully we'll put something to go together. But we have a lot of ideas, and it's we have a lot of friends who are working with these kind of stuff. So I think it's going to be cool, and um, 
I really look forward to doing something like that, even though it's kind of weird um, playing in front of no one. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but I've, I've liked, you know, what some bands are doing, you know, playing in a studio, for instance, or maybe a, just a rehearsal room doing something like that. That kind of, That's kind of cool. Uh, some bands that are just on stage and there's no one there, that's, I don't know, that's weird. So uh, we'll see. What? You know, you, you make like uh, four teams. Yeah, yeah. You know, they they put uh, you know some uh, some some photos of people in front of you, and uh, you or imagine even a big screen, <laughs> crowd, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crowd big crowd. posters. You know, <laughs> that's what we use our projector for. Just big, like just, just fans in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Michael. Um, there's a lot of uh, people, a lot of them that are going to uh, are thinking that uh, streaming maybe can be an alternative to uh, to make money uh, just because now uh, no no uh, no musician makes money because you know there's no concerts there's nothing. Um, are you thinking about this uh, business plan? I don't know, not as a business plan, but I think it, it does make sense. Like if you can't go out. And you want to do something special, and it takes a lot of effort, you know, like it, to to make a, a proper show, you know, where you, you do the whole for production and the crew and everything. People needs to get paid, uh, so doing it like for a fee, like you know, a ten euro fee or something like that for a proper full show, um, I, I'm okay with that. I've I've paid tons of those shows, like just because I want to see it. I want to see what it's like. I want to see if it's worth it. And there's been some amazing stuff that I've seen. I think like. Or was it Leprous has done it? They are fantastic. Amorphous did an amazing one that I saw. So who's done it? Uh, looking forward to Evergrade doing it in a couple of days. I mean, it. I think it's, you know, maybe not. I mean, it's an alternative, sure. You know, nothing will ever beat the, the experience of being in a crowd and, and being on stage. But as an alternative for bands that maybe cannot tour um, in the future or doing special sets, doing special things, now that we realize that it actually works and we have the technology we have the you know the setup and all that stuff why not use it you know i'm 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 fine with that i'm i'm not sure it would be something for us but i i really appreciate what bands do it i love like you know getting an insight into you know someone's practice page <laughs> space when they uh, record drums or guitar or seeing uh, bands in their rehearsal room just because it's different you know you know when you just see them in one setting and that's it so i think this is um exciting for in many ways as well even though it's sad not to go out i get a suggestion you know yeah for the release show uh you can come to tunisia and make it we have no corona here oh it's well. over <laughs> it's over well, and you get you get it. here here yeah. you got Tarak, I, I, and I, here I, you got Maddie. you know here it is Maddie and Tarak, and they can organize it you yeah. know you come with a band with the material And uh, you you can make a release show with uh, with public. That does sound good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea, isn't it? <laughs> There's no COVID, no Corona in Tunisia. It's uh, it's over. We'll be bringing it. You know, we're coming from Sweden, like the one of the worst. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you you let it open. We close everything. You know. That's uh, the difference. <laughs> we quarantine for two weeks and then we come. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sounds like yeah. a plan. Yeah, you 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 rehearse the uh, in the quarantine, you know, for um, one week, you know, and after you come and uh, you make a, a show in front of uh, Tunisian fans, and you can broadcast it uh, maybe on on YouTube and internet, and and here we go. <laughs> I like it. A anyway, we could like, find a loophole so we can actually play in for the crowd. crowd. I'm all for it. So, yes. <laughs> And you can have a public. Tarak. Yeah. You notice. You work on it. Make it happen. <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> um, <laughs> another question, uh, yeah. uh, Michael. You know, um, did you see the uh, Metallica Mondays? You know, every uh, every Monday night, Metallica uh, can uh, restream, you know, uh, an old show. Yeah. Uh, did you did, did you thought about doing this, uh, getting uh, to the to the, to the fans uh, all show, or maybe well, um, there was problems with rights and things like this? Uh, I mean, I, I really like that. I mean, it, it's great to see. I mean, I've, I've seen a few of those uh, of the Metallica yeah. and, and some other bands that are putting out like you know a show from last year's festival or something like that, and I think that's really cool. We don't really have 
that amount of material. It's not like we film every show like Metallica does, so they could, you know, put it out. But if we did, I think that would be a great idea. And I, we do have some shows that you know some festivals have, have sent to us that it was like, ah, oh, you can actually send you know, stream this if you like. And we're looking into that. Um, so I, I would like that. I mean, just have something out there, you know, something for people who are dying to see a live show. So I, I, yeah. I think it's a cool idea. It, it really is. And, you know, it's just, it doesn't um, lessen the experience at all of, of seeing a band. Like you just get more excited for, for seeing it, you know, in person the next time they come around, whenever that's going to be. Yeah, and it's um, it was very particular to to receive you know Metallica twenty years ago, ten years ago, you know, and yeah. to, to see the the evolution. Yep. Uh, I, I would like to uh, how much um, I would like to to see you know one of the concerts of uh, Dark Tranquility from the beginning or from twenty years ago or fifteen years ago, you know. Well, it would be Lether, great. when you <laughs> singing Lether, singing you know the old song, the old stuff. We don't have the way you did it before, you know. Yeah, I I would like that too, I, but we don't really have that much material. Nothing that yeah. broadcast quality. It's I mean, it's super crappy recordings, um, old videotapes, that kind of stuff. So it, it's not that much. And the, the the things that are decent are or fine are already on YouTube. So you know, and we've been kind of bad when when it comes to recording shows like. Um, we haven't really put any effort into like you know hiring you know camera crews all that stuff just yeah, not for us for some reason so it's but it's bad i wish we had right now so we can just like fucking shower the internet with with material yeah greeting from berlin germany have to see you uh, all of you back on the road uh, soon once the pesky corona business is over corona business <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Got a couple of questions for Michael. Have you thought about writing your own music and starting a solo project? And the second question, assuming you know who is uh, Young Wim Malmsteen, is Lord, uh, what do you think of his music? <laughs> okay. Have I thought about a solo project? No, I have not. Um, but I have, you know, other projects that I've been doing over the years, and I have some lined up that are really exciting, that is fun. You know, playing with some other friends that I haven't, you know, we haven't, played with or sang with that kind of thing so i don't really feel the need like solo project like dr quality is everything that i want in a band you know and i we have the freedom to do whatever we want i feel um so yeah. i'm okay with that but then like doing stuff with other musicians it's fun you know just as a distraction as a learning experience as um like something else especially nowadays like we're, we're not busy at all you might as well do that so I, i've been doing that so Look, look out for that. That's going to be some cool, cool stuff announced soon. Um, Ingve Monsten, I love Ingve. Of course, he's Swedish. He's the our only rock star. Like maybe first rock star. Second one would be Mickey D. But it's <laughs> one of one of two. Um, and I love I, old Ingve stuff. I mean, Rising Force, amazing, amazing records. Uh, Jöran Edman is one of my favorite Swedish singers. Um, yeah, I love Ingve. But I've seen him a couple of times in the last couple of years. Not impressed. I'm impressed yeah. by his playing, but it, the band and like the song choices, all that stuff. Um, not, nah, not, not really happening anymore. But of course, I love it. And I know Anders and Jens, who used to play with him. I know them a little bit, and I've heard a lot of amazing, incredible, super fucking hilarious stories of him. And I, so I, I, I love him dearly. Cartagots loves uh, Malmsteen. <laughs> Of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We recorded the version of uh, I Am a Viking on the first uh, album. Ooh. That, that's why. <laughs> and, so, uh, um, I, 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 have a, I have a live recording of Jörn singing that song with Ingve once. Really? Did, oh. did one, one show ever, and then he quit. And I have that live recording. And we invited Mats Levin who sing uh, with Malmsteen. He's Swedish also. Yeah, 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 Mats. Yeah. Yeah. With us to play, <laughs> he is awesome. Yeah, Matt is one of the good ones. Yeah, there's a lot of good mus uh, musicians, believe it or not. Yeah, 
Uh, okay, so I got some problem with my camera, but uh, it's okay. Let's uh, go on. Uh, <laughs> oh, here I'm back. Uh, okay. Um, this is from Andrea Elena Kremer. Uh, great to see you, Michael. Great song, Cartagot. It's new for me, but awesome. A new fan. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Gothic and exactly me. I'm also just watching live concert and official videos this day, hoping everything will get to normal without any new uh, miss live shows. The aura, the spirit, nothing can replace that. Of course. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Georges Boudoulis, uh, cheers from Greece, Michael. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Uh, Ayman Buzwita, uh, question to Michael. Are you aware that Tunisian metalheads generally think of Leve as one of the best songs ever? Is that a fact? Yeah. I know, I know it's popular. I think you guys mentioned it, that we should play it, like the first time we came over, and I believe we did. Maybe not the first time, but we played it when we came back. Yeah. If I remember correctly. So, yeah. And I, I, I did notice that, you know, it was... I don't know why those, those things that rarely are communicated to us. You know, you don't really know. I mean, sure, if you play enough in a in a in a country in a city, and you know what songs really work and what they want to hear, sure. But coming to like a place like Tunisia, where we've only played very very rarely, it's hard to kind of know that. But uh, it's it's great to kind of get some uh, you know knowledge in advance of what we should play and what people are expecting and. Uh, and I, yeah, I did notice that Lita is requested and liked. After, which after, is not very After the release show, a lot of people asked, why you don't play Lita with my friend? Oh, yeah. do it. You need to learn the song. <laughs> uh, for me, it's one of the 20 best songs ever written uh, in the metal. For me, it's a work of, it's a work of art. Mm. Thank you. That's it. Uh, so uh, you don't you don't think that it's work of art? <laughs> I, I mean, music in general is. No, I like it. I really do. I love I love singing and I love when we play it. Um, and of course, you I know, mean, it's it was a, a huge part of our career. Like uh, doing like recording and putting out the gallery was what kind of defined us as a band in '95. It was my first record as a singer, not as a guitar player, and yeah, it, it was a huge thing for me and, uh, and that song is we played it more than yeah most other songs in our catalog yeah uh, uh -huh. so um i've seen the video of michael stan in the dark tank creatives page uh, when he surfed over the crowd in the summer breeze open air it was really magic very good to see this act in festivals <laughs> were you there yeah uh, who knows <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was fun. Like our our tour manager and uh, front of house uh, sound guy, he was his birthday. He was fiftieth birthday, so I had to do something, and I wanted to surprise him. So I I surfed all the way. It was probably like six hundred meters, something like that, all the way over to him, so I can shake his hand and then all the way back. <laughs> I didn't make it <laughs> till the end of the song, but it was it was fun. It was a personal record of mine. I've I've crowd surfed a long way, like. Uh, Certain venues, I sometimes I have like the sound guy have a like a shot of whiskey or something like that, and I surf <laughs> to have that, and then I surf all the way back. But uh, this time, yeah, it was uh, it's a marathon of uh, crowd surfs, and uh, I'm really happy that it worked out, <laughs> and then someone filmed it. But um, I have to lose some weight, so maybe I can do it again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Chrissy say carnivore. Uh, نهاري غني مرسو بدير جا تونسي تطلع حاجة حلوة نتصوره. Okay, he's making you a challenge to sing something in um, Tunisian dialect. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that'd be tough. A uh, couple of questions to Cartagots. I mean, are we going to ask them uh, later? Um, Andrea Selena, White Zombie. She like it. Zach Black. Uh, hi, Zach. Uh, would DT ever consider touring? Uh, would oh. Dark Turkey ever consider touring Africa? Oh wow, we would love to. I mean, yeah, Tunisia is as, as far as we've come. Um, it would be great. Like, I don't know how how it works. I mean, there are some some countries, some areas that we aren't really familiar with in terms of touring. 
you know, um, if you're not contacted by promoters, we don't really have, you know, like a connections that we need in order to make, make that happen. It's difficult, um, but it would be great if it's possible. You know, I don't know what countries we would play where, where there's a fan base. It's hard to gauge as well, but if we could, it would be awesome. Uh, Biohazard Hellier, yeah, Agnotis France and Bad Brains, uh, you are an Iron Blade and Jet the Best. Okay, uh, some of you guys talked about Iron Maiden. Um, Iman Rip, uh, she's in Greece, uh, she say hey. Okay, Kelly, with Dark Tutorial, okay. okay. Ah, especially South Africa. Yeah, that's probably easier. We got some requests yeah. from there, but it hasn't happened yet. But hey, we've only yeah. been doing this for 30 years now. We, sh we should be making it any, any, any day now. Make a show with Cedar. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're from South Africa, but now, now they're uh, they are American. But uh, well, that's true. Uh, but, yeah, some South African guys in there. Cool. And forget about the bill. I had while listening to Matty and his band in Buff sur le toit. <laughs> that's for you guys, Cartagots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would pay for a stream if there is no real life show, as as I've done it. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, everyone it's, is going to second best yeah. thing. It's not, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, best thing, and yeah. and that's what we have right now. We have to uh, live with it. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Nothing above a live concert. Uh, Here's your categories. You're the best Tunisian metal band. Uh, I agree. Uh, the monster in me and memories of never ending pain are my favorite songs. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Stan from Taylor Shore. Taylor Shore is a Tunisian singer in Germany who um, who sang in um, in a, in a metal uh, you know uh, competition. Um, oh. And he's very well known in Germany, uh, but uh, unfortunately not very well known in Tunisia. So, Stan, do you actually write all the lyrics for DT and are what uh, and what inspired you to write Misery's Crowns? Misery's Crown. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do right. nowadays. Nicholas has, written, <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas has written some some lyrics over the years, uh, but all the rest I've written uh, and um, inspired me to write Misery Crown. I think social phobia more than anything um yeah and just fear of of meeting people in everyday life um being stuck with with people that you just cannot stand um being close to people who kind of bring like that whatever energy you have down mm -hmm. um and and not contributing to um to the conversation that kind of people that, and I think everybody has one of those or two of those in their circle of friends and uh, and I think a fear of that is is what kind of wrote, drove me to write that song you know and just really bad experiences when it comes to just people that are um, not really um, I don't know how to say but not considerate or socially capable and and as someone who's like sure I can be social, but I I'd rather not go out in case I, I meet someone I don't want to talk to that kind of stuff. And we all I guess I, I have a lot of those days where I just don't I don't want to do that. I just want to keep to myself or with my own family. I don't need any other. And, uh, and during some of those days, I wrote that song. Great song, very very great song, very great song. Uh, Mad Snake, uh, three questions to Michael. Are you aware that most of Tunisian metal head think of Levy as one of the best songs oh, ever? That's done. done. Yeah. Um, no as a huge fan, I've been to all of your concerts in Paris since 15 years. Never that song was played. Would you please consider playing it in your next tour? So, Dude, <laughs> been now. I've been to all the concerts in Paris too. We have played it. I promise you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but it but shows in Paris are pretty nuts. <laughs> Maybe things get forgotten, but yeah, we have played it. But oh man, I love playing Paris. I miss that. Uh, when well, the next album is coming out, um, no set date, but we're looking at late October. Yes, yeah. it's, it's being mixed right now. It's going to be finished in a matter of weeks, and Nicholas is working on the cover. It's going to look awesome. 
we have the title, we have everything done, all is set. Sure. What? We're sure about it. Yeah. You know, you know the best one. No, no, what? Nicholas oh, worked on uh, yeah, Nicholas for, for yes. our bath album plus uh, t-shirt design. Yes, of course he did. <laughs> Good connection here. No, but, uh, no, so yeah, so it's coming out October somewhere. I think late October. Okay, uh, Pedro Pirani, thank you so much for your attention. One last question from me: How was the invitation to participate in Metal Hell Singer game? Yeah, I read it uh, today. I think it's um, you're with uh, Matt Heavy from Tuivian, Alicia White Glues from Ark Enemy, uh, and uh, Beyond Street from Soil Work uh, in the Metal Hell Singer. Yeah, this is super cool. Like I, I'm a huge gamer. You know, I love playing. Yeah. I have since I was a kid. And um, some people actually knew, like, through my girlfriend and her work, her son worked at a company that does music for a video game. And then they contacted me for something uh, like a year ago, two years ago even. Um, and it was supposed to be like some kind of Viking game. And they wanted me to sing some Viking stuff. And I was like, yeah, sure. Anything for a video game, awesome, super cool. But then it turned into something else. And this is actually from a studio uh, in Stockholm. And those yeah. guys work on uh, Battlefield series and uh, bad com Battlefield Band Company, those awesome, awesome games. And all these people are kind of the ones that left that company. Now they're going to do something new. So it's uh, like a shooter game. It's kind of like Doom in a way. It's super fast, super frenetic, hellish. Looks like all the death metal, heavy metal covers you've ever seen. Uh, but then there's music to it as well. And the music is an uh, integral part of it. So when you're shooting, when you're moving, like if you do that to the rhythm of the music, that will get you like, you know, bigger scores, um, up upgrades, all that kind of stuff. So eventually kind of you reach this kind of God mode, God level where you just kill everything basically. And it's super cool. So the music is in different layers. So when you start out, if you're just, you know, playing like a, looser you only hear like the bass line or the drums or something like that and then as the better you get you know the more intense the the game gets the the more intense the music gets as well so the songs that that have been written and the ones that i've been singing are in different layers so uh, the vocals only kind of kick in when you get to like level seven when you're like really fucking kicking ass and uh and shooting people in the face that's when that kicks in and then you know it becomes like full-on metal and it's super cool and it's early development still it's going to come out yet next year but it's so cool and the songs are amazing really amazing like you can tell you can listen to the trailer and there's just a snippet of one of the songs that i sing on but it, it's really cool and just being part of uh a video game is is awesome to me you know and the main character is voiced by troy baker who's fucking joel and last of us all that stuff it's super fucking cool that's a geek you know this is a dream you tried game. it you tried it yeah, yeah yeah i've tried it and i've seen a lot of demos but it's yeah so far it's it's very early um but it's yeah. uh, they're working on it and it's it's gonna be super cool so keep your eye out and the music i heard like when matt singing it sounds awesome, and I know Bjorn is gonna kick, kill, kick ass, and Alyssa as well. So it's gonna be super cool, and it's gonna come out on like vinyl, and you know the, the soundtrack is gonna maybe outsell the game. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, not a question, just another sweat here. I'm happy to see Michael doing something together with a band from Tunis. So cool to see non European bands and a fellow sweat opening one's eyes for them. Uh, this is very cool. Thanks, <laughs> Miki. Very nice. <laughs> uh, what are the challenges you face uh, when you start your career with metal music in Tunisia? Well, I'm going to concentrate now with uh, uh, Michael. Uh, thank you for the time that you, you gave us uh, tonight, uh, Mike. Uh, Lucas, uh, I just want to thank you for make great music. Uh, awesome. I would love to have Michael Stan as a guest in one of the songs of my bands. Uh, Matalobus and also play some video games with him. He's the man. Greetings from Mexico. You can always kick my ass <laughs> in Call of Duty or something like that anytime. Just join me. <laughs> I'm always online. <laughs> and, and I'll, I'll just vocals. Just send me a request. I'll, I'll check it out. If it's uh, if it's as good as Categories, maybe I'll consider. Mm.
הוא ימשיך כי The Gallery, The Greatest Melodic Death Metal Album, besides uh, Clayman by In Flames, it's a really great thing Michael collaborating with my favorite Tunisian band. We want more. All right, all right, let's do more. You have more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Taylor Shaw, thank you for the answer. Aphelia, we could be best buds. <laughs> sure, looking forward to seeing you. Uh, hello, everyone from Sheba Rossi. Oh, yeah. Happy to see you, Michael. We miss you here in Tunisia. Brother. Brother. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Zanzan and Emission Metal. Nice voice, bro. Uh, thank you, Sheb. Uh, alors, I think this is from Turkey. Um, Ogutan Tilek, hey man, I just like you are both a great musician and a gamer. Great combination. My um, <laughs> Patrick Nyagi, Michael DT, I'd like to thank you for playing a gig in my small city a while ago. Uh, it was such an incredible experience and I consider it life changing event in some way. Well, um, I have no idea where that was, but um, uh, it's a pity he didn't write it. It's a pity no, he didn't no, write no, it. Yeah. No. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, good evening. Does Michael think there are songs or albums which are underappreciated by fans? Does he feel disappointed about them? That's a that's a big question. I, I think. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Everybody has different feelings about you know, songs and music, like some people appreciate, you know, the first album they got into, you know, it's like, oh, this yeah. is the best. everything is since then has been, you know, second rate or whatever. And, and that's, what's fun about it. Like music is so subjective, you know? And of course, like when I listen to some of the old stuff that we've done, I, I go like, hey, what were we thinking? Like, why did we do this? Or what, what went through our minds when we did it? You know, that's normally, uh, and sometimes I, I love an old song that we haven't played in forever just because it was so different. I had no idea what was going on in our minds and that makes it exciting. And some albums, you know, I, I love for the songs, but I don't like the production, maybe that kind of stuff. So it, it all changes, but it, in the end, like every album is just a product of its time. Like you do the best you can at a certain point and that's it. So I, I don't really look back and go like, people should appreciate this more or it should have been better or you know not, something like that it's like yeah it doesn't make any difference just frustrating yeah you always have the possibility to change uh, the song uh, on stage on show exactly. yeah yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> real, not, i mean re-recording stuff or doing like new versions of stuff yeah not for me no but kicking ass on show. best yeah. possible version on stage absolutely that, i like that yeah Uh, glad to hear you're into video games. Uh, what games are you playing at the moment? Are you into Resident Evil franchise by chance? Uh, P.S. Mike Gerton did a great job with the Doom OST. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I played Resident Evil 3 and then 2 I'm, I'm working on through right now. I just finished The Last of Us Part 2 last night. That's why I'm a little tired <laughs> because it was super late. I, I couldn't put my controller down. But holy shit, that's one of the best games I've ever played, honestly. It, uh, it, it did things to me that no other game has so that was super cool i'm incredible fucking broke my heart um and yes mick gordon's soundtrack to doom is amazing i love that game i, I i'm through my i'm at my second playthrough just plowing through that hellscape of a game and i love it it's it's incredible one of the best shooters ever Uh, Mike, this is the question. Uh, hey, man, what is your PSN, PSN ID? ID? <laughs> It's Sony Jackal 666. Um, I'll put it up on my Twitter. Like, so let's go and check out my Twitter. I'll, I'll put it there. So you can uh, join. Great. I, I play mostly PC. Uh, is it possible to see you with uh, your band Drug Tranquility on Tunisian stage one day? It will be very nice. They were in Tunisia, but long time ago. And Tarak and Mehdi are going to prepare the reveal show of the new album in Tunisia yeah. because there's no Corona in Tunisia. No brain. Just uh, <laughs> as soon as everything, all this nonsense is over and um, well, yeah, we're coming back for sure. 
Uh, okay, so uh, he, he, he was from Turkey, yeah? uh, Turkey. Oh, yeah, all uh, right. Yes, it's from Turkey. Oh. Indeed, greetings. Um, the Ring, best song ever. Yeah. It's from Arvin Pad. Uh, Atoma, he likes Atoma, yeah, it's right. more uh, on the new stuff. And Michael, I'm in Gothenburg in two weeks where I can get DT beer. <laughs> well, there are a few places. Um... <sighs> Tweet me and I'll, I'll show you. But yeah, there are a few bars that has it. And also there are some like liquor stores where you can actually buy our, our Dark Tranquility beer that we put out last year. It's not super fresh, but it's still damn good. Okay. And uh, Enrico, cheers, guys. Uh, keep up with the great work, Cartagots. Great band. Uh, hey, Mike, uh, see you uh, soon there, hopefully. And uh, it's my buddy, Enrico. Holy <laughs> shit, man. Love you, man. Thank you, Enrico. <laughs> Okay, um, it was a great pleasure. Thank you very much, uh, Michael Stan, for being here. Uh, it was a big pleasure, big honor um, to uh, to talk with you. Hey. Uh, Thanks for taking the time. No, thank for you for taking the time to to, to speak with oh, us for um, uh, one hour now. <laughs> thank you very much. Hey, cheers. Let's <laughs> cheers. Right? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, wait. Uh, I like the idea, huh? <laughs> what are you doing? Are we still speaking in English or because there are 44 people that uh, are here or can we move to the same account on the road to the same account? Merci beaucoup, les gars, déjà, Nathalie. Vous nous avez donné la possibilité de, de, de parler avec lui. Uh, C'était un grand plaisir. Merci beaucoup. Merci à toi. Ah, merci à toi. Merci à vous. Déjà, et puis, uh, bravo pour, pour le clip. Déjà, Haja Tamil, c'est tout un kiff. 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 C'est Vraiment. Et puis, bon. Ah non, mais nous, en termes de ça, partenaire, on a un box, on a un bank. Ouais. Ouais, vraiment, pour les fils des moments, c'était exceptionnel. On dirait que tu as eu le temps de moments, le col, le col, le col. C'est ça, ouais, c'est chou. Tout d'un coup, tu te retrouves une année en ouais. arrière. Ouais. Ouais. Euh, alors, une fois que cette question, on est amené comme euh, Ah, voilà. Aïm euh, Lohibi. Any plans of covering on Duke Des Priest songs again, like the good old days, or uh, can we expect more clubs with Tunisian artists? Donc déjà, déjà tout le monde a première partie. T'as t'as Duke Des Priest. Exact. Rappel. Vas-y là. Ah oui. Ok. Donc qu'est-ce qu'il nous donne? Les covers de Duke Des Priest, bon. C'est toujours un plaisir, un match festif du Las Prise déjà. Euh, ah. mais, mais je dirais toujours que. Euh, euh, à mettre les covers dans le chien, mais peut-être que Fibrou va quand même faire un peu de temps pour faire un peu de temps. J'ai une guitare de couille, j'ai un petit peu. Ah, oh, Fibrou, là, ouais. Fibrou, il est à Brighton, Brighton, Brighton moi, je suis Londres. Il est à Brighton, dans le sud de l'Angleterre. Ah, oh, Brighton, c'est <rire> Montréal. Je suis à Londres. Ouais, euh... Ok, ou le, ou le souhait de c'est euh, donc euh, collaboration avec d'autres artistes tunisiens. Et des souhaits de Ah, mais d'autres groupes tunisiens, il y a qui, moi, non Non, je ne sais pas. 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 Tu as nu avec des, des artistes tunisiens, je ne sais pas. Je ne sais pas, personnellement, j'aimerais bien avoir des, euh, des voix offrines, par exemple, à la Fititroïde, à la carte Gotts, par exemple. Ça peut arriver. D'ailleurs, je suis venu à la carte de Gotts, je suis venu à la carte de Euh, on est partout en Black, ça, on a les collaborations où euh, on voit ça partout dans le monde. Moi, de, juste si tout en ce on fait mèche. Ça serait bien, Black. Yo, Khalana, thanks guys for this great moment. Uh, 
Thank you. Merci à vous aussi euh, d'avoir participé. Thomas Ed, Anna, et tous ceux qui ont regardé le show avec tout, vous, toutes vos questions, tous vos commentaires. Enrico, please continue in English, guys. <laughs> <laughs> ok, ok, mec. <laughs> ok, man. Tu as l'air de si Charman a fait plus le Mayan. <laughs> A little bit at least, don't speak in English. Uh, okay, Silky uh, Nokalakari, you got an admirable accent, Kerem. Yes, I speak Franklish. <laughs> Franklish. <laughs> A uh, little bit uh, of Tunisian accent with French accent with uh, the English and it's uh, it's my accent. It's okay. it's like that. El <laughs> uh, Khan, any concert soon? Talk, uh, كانت عندنا ايطاليا سويد برتغال كلهم ما نولي على غد Thank you so much for the Zanzana interviews, Kerim. You're welcome. Uh, any chance to bring Kiko Lerero again to Tunisia? Kiko, Kiko, Kiko now he's got a little bit, a little fire in the world. He has his own group. Look at this. Look at this. لا 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 ما عادش ولا كيكو تحكي على كوز شي عمل يا ولدي عمل اه كوز شي سمعتي اكزاكتومون اوه واي لا لا كيكو يلعب مع ميجاديف دونك ما يلعبوش برشا هما ميجاديف لما حال نجيبوهم لا نجيبوهم هما <laughs> okay, I don't understand a thing, uh, so I'll just uh, go check out uh, more of your music. Stay metal, you guys, uh, Peters. Um, just to remember that categories have um, they are on Spotify, they are on Deezer, they are uh, uh, on YouTube uh, channels, uh, on uh, iTunes. Yeah, and uh, all the uh, streaming. All the platform, uh, whose platforms from seventeen uh, of July. From seventeen yeah. of July. Yes. Okay. The release can you order on the seventeen of July, and you can order on the website or uh, through the the label uh, Metalville. Okay, and uh, I th I think. Uh, hey guys, I, I saw uh, we can order even on Nuclear Blast uh, website, Category Salva. Oh, really? I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's in uh, the workshop. Uh, the workshop. That's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh huh. Okay, Hazer. Uh, I've seen the photo of Rob Hartford with the CD of the album uh, of the Monster in Me in hands. I like it. More success, guys. Uh, Thank you. Uh, it was the first album, uh, Cartagots, and uh, it was. Um, Two years ago in Romania, and um, during when we opened the stage for for Judas Priest, and yeah. uh, one of the big moments in our lives too. <laughs> Since we were uh, influenced by the music and the um, um, the career of Judas Priest, and uh, still till now they, they they hit the stage and they tour. So um, yes, one of the best moments. Yeah, and uh, the monster renew guys. <laughs> she had. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. she had. She had. She had. Uh, he, he wrote you something. He wrote something for you, Tarek. Tarek, yezik mudokhan, bro. Stop smoking. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. So guys, um, it was a great pleasure having you. C'était un grand plaisir de vous avoir. Charmin, qu'est-ce que vous, c'est quoi Donc le déjà le, le, le clip a, a commence à bien tourner là. Euh, oui oui. Euh, ce qui est bien, les, les magazines ils ont remarqué la sortie, enfin le, le, le clip, chose qui est intéressante. Ouais. Ou euh, voilà, pour le moment on est en train de voir. Le, les résultats, mais c'est surtout que 
de faire ça avec une icône qui m'a extend, ma haja. Hey, haja que bien, c'est vrai, ça c'est clair. Tiens d'ailleurs, Shana, on a aidé, par exemple. On parle comme la texture. Ah, je connais ce qu'on parle. Je connais. Brave words. Cartagot really Swiss were from the wicked video. Donc, il y a voilà. À tout chauffer. Brave words, c'est l'un des plus grands. Donc, des haja, je suis un haja qui recède, très abarca. Donc, je suis un des grands des hédia, par exemple. Ça, c'est Mega Rock Radio. Uh, oui. Voilà, Carta Gods, uh, Release Whisper from the Wicked. Voilà. voilà. Donc, uh, en plus, uh, vous faites parler de la Tunisie uh, donc d'une manière complètement indirecte et ça, c'est génial aussi. Il y a le mot Tunis, Tunisie partout donc, dans ce que vous faites, dans, ouais, dans tout ce qu'on voit ici. <rire> donc, elle est Rinéa à Metal Hammer. Objectif numéro 1 avec. <rire> ah, elle est Kenhabit. <rire> Euh, donc ça c'est Metal Hammer euh, euh, qu'est-ce que j'ai repéré aussi j'ai repéré aussi ça euh, voilà donc ça c'est True Metal euh, ça c'est italien Cartagot, c'est le vidéo d'Al Vivo The Whispers from the Wicked featuring Michael Stein Dark Tranquility voilà, et par Metaler Tunisini hey. <coughs> اي على الاقل يتكلموا بالكدي على تونس نعطى في ايطاليا نعطى مش لا وفاهمين مش يعيشوا بالضبط في ايطاليا خاطر هما بيدهم ما يزوبا معناتها باغ اكزومبل كي مشينا لايطاليا عملناو كي لعبنا في لاجلوتينيشن في اوت اللي فات فما جورناليست معناتها بنت على الاخر كيفاش كنا ورا جروب تاع ميتال تعديو في التيلي في تونس تعديو في في لي راديو Et tout ça, on a quand même été dans la région. On a fait ça, on a déjà fait ça, mais c'est très difficile. Je t'adore les radios, les clips. Donc, les médias, c'est tout ça quand même. Ça m'a amené un bon travail, est-ce qu'il paraît, par rapport à l'Italie, en tout cas. Tiens, d'ailleurs, Ayman Louhibi, il y a dit comme ça, il y a eu l'aide à l'équipe, il y a eu très délicieuse. Très délicieuse. Amen. أمان في هو في برايتون نعطى وصلت له تري ديليسيوز ولا شيء <تصفيق> كيف ما يقولوا في سيدي بوسعيد وان شاء الله نشوفوكم بيانتو سيلكي نوكا كولاري انفورتلي بوث ماي فرنش اند ماي ارابيان ساكس سو بيد يو فيرويل ميرسي شكرا فور ذيس انترفيو ستي سيف ستي ميتال ثانك يو فيري ماتش جوين اور بيج اند تشيك اوت اور فيديوز اوكي والخان وي اولسو نيد انترفيو وذ تيمو سامرز بيكوز اي سولو وذ يور فويس ميدي تيك ذا سونجز تو انذر ليفل ثانك يو والخان ثانك يو اي معليش لي تيمو ما نجمش يجي معانا حبينا نكونوا كلنا معناتها موجودين مي Une prochaine fois, tu vois. Ouais, exactement. Mais dis-moi, mais c'est ma outrage. Bah, mais dis-moi, il est à Toronto, tu vois, mais je ne suis pas cool. Montréal, je ne suis pas à Toronto. Ah, Montréal, ça m'a dit. Ouais. You're a great band with very high performance. So now it is time to work hard and offer to us more golden pieces. I trust in your capacity and I believe that Cartagots will be between the most famous metal bands. Merci, Mario. Ouais. Bon, Louis. Je suis habitué de connaître un petit. C'est quoi là Je suis tard. 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 Alors, tu cherches l'album, on compte le 17 juillet, c'est ça Le 17 juillet, ouais. Ok, c'est parfait. Bon, Louled, merci beaucoup. C'était un plaisir, toujours un plaisir d'être avec vous. Merci à toi. Bonne continuation. Pour l'invitation. On a dit qu'on aime Marjay et Matim ou la sortie d'album, si tu veux, ou la sortie de la vidéo G. Ok, sans problème, c'est toujours un plaisir d'être avec vous. 
Euh, tiens, Mad Snake. Les gars, je me répète, mais j'adore la version acoustique de Memories of Never Ending Pain, des pépites comme ça dans les prochains albums. Ouais. Ah, tu Femme, déjà, le confinement, déjà, bien en effet, moi, à la phase. Femme, j'ai déjà un petit peu de l'album, un peu de Monster Enemy, comme on a fait dans l'album, on disait qu'il kiffe. Bad sorti dans l'album, j'ai déjà un peu de l'album, donc, du coup, on a quelques trucs, on a un peu de l'album, on a un peu de l'album. Et euh, on verra, mais femme à Kaaba qui m'a même raisonné. Moi, je kiffe, mais Hassien a je dis, c'est le quoi, c'est le quoi, on va dire. Je ne sais pas si tu as dit que le clip est le clip est le clip. C'est le clip. C'est le clip. Good boys. Je ne sais pas si tu as dit que le clip est le clip. C'est le clip. Très bien. C'est bon, je suis content. Mais rien ne peut le dire. Mais rien ne peut Voilà, et un arbre tout motard. Super. On est en train d'étudier les possibilités de les sortir. Qui m'a dit que. Ce n'est euh, déjà, on a raté toute la saison par les, euh, euh, les festivals. Donc, euh, tout est, a été reporté pour l'année prochaine. Et encore pour l'année la, prochaine, les bourses de Hajit ont été euh, replanifiées, si tu veux. Donc, euh, euh, les disponibilités, tout ça, ça a été fait. Et en même temps, ça a été fait la belle, surtout quand est-ce que ça serait euh, idéal de, de sortir le prochain album. Vidéo jdida, yaï, c'est délicieux. Ok, waiting for les trucs, c'est ça là. Ok, Marie Mousseti, salut. Cash Blue, tout à l'heure, quand m'a dit, what are the challenges you faced when you started your career with metal in Tunisia? C'est la question que je vais faire à ça. Je vais faire 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 ça. C'est les moyens déjà euh, pour, euh, pour pouvoir euh, répéter et créer dans de bonnes conditions, chose qui n'est pas évidente pour l'école. Euh, après, euh, enfin, toujours le manque de, de structure, elle, elle, elle prend en charge l'artiste, pour l'encadrer. C'est notre objectif ultime. Nous, les artistes internes qui qui a vraiment du talent, ou à qui s'investit, il y a une structure qui, qui, qui va l'accueillir et pour qu'il puisse produire acte de bâche. Chose qu'on n'a pas trouvé et qu'on a dû euh, faire et refaire euh, au Hadna. Euh, donc voilà, euh, c'est ça, je pense, parmi les, les challenges. Abdelhamou Bachir. Abdelhamou Bachir. Une question en fait, qui fait des tours. Ah oui. كيف بدينا تقول لنا بديت صغير برشا ما عندناش شالانج وصعوبات زينا كوليج انا وزاك وقتها نقراو دوزيام اني سيكوندير ولا صعيبه ديجا معناتها تفاد ليك مش مي بون يظل من من لي زاني 2000 ولات ولات يظل برومي شالانج برومي شالانج بلا كي اكور تاع دو ولا تاع لا مينور فوالا <rire> Mais euh, euh, allez, le premier vrai challenge pour la guitare, c'est le barré, ça c'est clair. Hein. C'est un accord barré. Oui. <rire> Mais pour moi, c'était ça. Mais les barré, quand tu es birth, on verra dans un mois. Dans un mois là, là. <rire> on verra ça dans un mois. Uh, let us know also, don't keep this secret, Kerim. Uh, non, non. I know, 
they know <laughs> and you will see شكون مولاها هذه ما نعرف وحل معاها هذه ما نعرفش حكي دونك تاع شكون مولاها دونك شكون مولاها تاع ديليسيوز هذيك اه داكو اوكي لا على خاطر مخي يقول في ديليسيوز انا شكون تسمى لو جوب كارتاغوتس تارك جيو لا لا وقت كنا نقعدوا ديما في قهوه في سالامبو القهوه في سالامبو طمك البلاك نتاع كرتاج اه كرتاج بلاك نتاع كرتاج كلي موزايك زعما زعما مكتوبه كرتاجو وانا وقت كنا بدينا نبرهو نعملو موزيك كنا نسميو الجروب نسميو الجروب كرتاجو كرتاجو حكايه قديمه برك حكايه قديمه ما Euh, le nom était vraiment hyper bien trouvé, hein, Cartagots, oui. Dieu de Carthage, Cartagots, mais vraiment. Elle, personnellement, si, euh, si ça l'intéresse aussi, à chaque fois qu'on a vu Cartagots, c'est ce qu'on a fait avec eux, c'est ce qu'on a ça m'a attiré à l'écran, le nom que je disais, c'est le cas, 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 c'est سمبوليك على الاخر ما تنجمش تلقى خير من هكا لتونس ظهر لي فهمت؟ يا اخي شوف معناتها زار سيتي اون 2000 ظهر لي وقتها مع جماعه من الموت كل شيء وقتها كنا نبرفوا مع بعضنا ومن بعد زار اون 2003 دارت الدنيا وليت نغني مع كرتا دونك فوالا انا بيدي يعجبني برشا الاسم اقول لك حاجه ليكس <تصفيق> بون وليد وقت ايش مروح يا سي مادي؟ راك منتظر راك شكون؟ يا مادي يا مادي ياك منتظر في تونس راك يا مادي منتظر اكزاكتومون ما قلتش هك ما قلتش قلت انت راك قلت انت راك مادي منتظر في تونس باش نمشي تغني مع كارتاغوت مع اوتريتش مع واحد نعطي ال الروتين نتاعك العاديه تاع تونس يعني. كنت كنت شنو نعبد خاطر كان كيما قلت لك عندنا فما فازات في الصين في توا بيسكو سا ايتي ريبورتي ما فهميش علاش سي بلوس اون سي كونسونتر توا الاكثريه الخدمه على كارتا جوتس على لي زونجيسترومون على ديك سا ريبرون سورتو لي تورني كان كان نجم ناخذو شوز كي كي فايت تخي ديفيسيل معناتها. D'après la deuxième vague et tout ça. Mais euh, on va se concentrer plus à, 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 à les produits de ta catégorie sur les albums de ta catégorie. Ouais. Sinon, on dit bien que tu es né, mais tu es tout le 13 jours, donc. Ça va bien, je vois. Tu vois, mais. Tu as mis ton zril ou la. Tu as mis ton zril dans Montréal Femme, femme, zril dans Montréal. Femme, zril dans Montréal. Femme, zril, femme, had a zril bio, c'est le cas de ta famille. Lé, lé. Hey. بلك الفازيت باللي غاب الزرير باللي غاب الزرير باللي غاب ايه ها هذه حاجه ليكس حاجه ليكس شكون مولاها هي 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 حاجه ليكس الزرير باللي غاب ا دي هاو قال لكم دي سيرف ديما موجود وكريم بن عمر يعرف ايوه نعرف نعرف بس ما قاسم ويتينغ فور ذا نيو البوم جايز ريما قاسم ريما قاسم ها سميتها يا مهدي ميخا ميتا فيليستاسيون يا جون يا جون يا جون يا جون يا جون سميتها عاليه عاليه 